I love mini roundabouts. I genuinely do. Now, before you turn off because you think I'm a bit peculiar, let's take a look at the problem a mini roundabout solves and the alternative to solving that problem. This is an ordinary T-junction. Now, this is a very busy ordinary T-junction. As you can see, there is a queue of traffic which barely ever gets an opportunity to move. Rather annoying for the people waiting in the queue. There are basically two solutions to this problem. Firstly, you could have traffic lights. This is a great idea because the adjoining queue of traffic actually gets a chance to move when the lights change. But the trouble with traffic lights is, although they work really well when the roads are really busy, when the roads are quiet, you can find yourself waiting at a red light when nobody's there. That's a complete waste of time. The second solution to the problem is, you guessed it, my dear beloved mini roundabout. But look, T-junction, mini roundabout. T-junction, mini roundabout. Basically the same road, but now at the mini roundabout, everybody has someone to give way to. Instead of having one jammed up road having to wait for both sides whilst the main road gets to flow freely, everyone now has to more or less equally share the burden of giving way, which is a little bit more fair. And when it's not busy, you won't have to wait when nobody's there. That is why I love mini roundabouts. I love mini roundabouts because I hate waiting at traffic lights, especially when the road is empty. That's why we have mini roundabouts, but the real reason you're watching this video is to find out how to use a mini roundabout. So, let's take a look at the traffic flow on a typical mini roundabout. Oh gosh, um, well, uh, yeah, that's complicated. I can certainly see why mini roundabouts get confusing. If you look at all the cars, the roundabout looks like a complete mess. But once you know where to look, it actually gets quite simple. All you need to do is give way to vehicles driving towards the driver's side of the car. Of course, that won't work if your vehicle is not suited for your country. For example, if the steering wheel is on the wrong side. Don't give way to the passenger side of the car because people coming from that side should give way to you. Of course, if it looks like they're not stopping, it's a good idea to avoid a collision and wait. Here are some examples of when you should go and wait at mini roundabouts. In this example, you can see that the orange car needs to wait for cars coming from the right. When there are no longer cars coming from the right, the orange car can go. Again, on this occasion, the orange car needs to wait for cars from the right, but this time a blue car comes from the left. The blue car acts as a shield, giving the orange car enough time to go. This time it's the blue car patiently waiting for cars from the right. But then, it's saviour! The mighty shield comes from ahead, shielding it from that light blue car and giving it a chance to get going. Again, the blue car is waiting for cars coming from the right, although this time the cars are not coming from a road on the right, but from a road ahead and signalling to turn right. If the oncoming cars were not signalling, the blue car could go. But as they are all signalling to turn right, the blue car is needed to wait for the assistance of its very helpful, if a little less dramatic, shield. In this case, it is the orange car on the left, allowing the blue car to carry on on its hopefully merry way. Mini roundabouts are some of the most important places to use your signals correctly. Not signalling, or the indicator, on a mini roundabout is likely to cause an accident. This dark blue car only needs to wait for the oncoming light blue car if it's signalling to turn right around the mini roundabout. But as the light blue car is not signalling, the dark blue car makes the correct decision to go. But the light blue car turns right anyway. Now how was the dark blue car supposed to mind read the light blue car's intentions? Hence why signalling is very important. On mini roundabouts, make sure you signal left for going left, right for going right, but there is no signal needed when you're going ahead. You don't need to signal when you leave a mini roundabout like you do on a big roundabout because your signal or lack of signal on approach is enough to let everyone know where you're going. It's important for you to use other people's signals to determine whether or not you should go. 
If a car's signal means they won't cross your path, you don't need to wait for them, even if they are from the right. Sometimes at mini roundabouts, you can get what's known as a Mexican standoff, where everybody's giving way to everybody. Let me show you this situation and how to deal with it. Here is an example of a Mexican standoff. The green car is waiting for the black car, the black car is waiting for the blue, and the blue is waiting for the green. Therefore, no one has priority. A good etiquette is to let the person waiting the longest go first, which will then create a shield, allowing another car to go and getting the mini roundabout moving once again. If no one is moving, don't be afraid to start first. Just make sure you start slowly to warn the others. If you move quickly and someone else has the same idea, the consequences can be bad. Here's an example of what normally confuses learner drivers when they're trying to get to grips with mini roundabouts. I've noticed a lot of experienced drivers get confused by this too. The confusion is caused by the fact a mini roundabout changes who you would normally give way to. If you were turning right on this road, you would have to give way to the oncoming cars, but not the cars on the right. When you take the same road and put a mini roundabout on it, you no longer need to give way to those oncoming cars, but instead you now give way to the cars on the right. I normally find this makes new drivers very hesitant at turning right on mini roundabouts with oncoming cars. By far and above, the most important thing though, is if you get confused, just stop at the giveaway line and wait. Give yourself a moment to figure out what you need to do and then proceed. Doesn't matter if people behind are papping their horn at you, getting angry with you. It's not worth the risk of going when you're not sure. Just wait, think about who you need to give way to and go when you're feeling comfortable. That's all for this one. Please comment for what you want to see in the future. Like and share if you do like it. And please subscribe to get those future videos.